Hi everyone, I'm Beatrice Verhoeven and I'm sitting here with my two colleagues, Umberto Gonzalez and Trey Williams, and we're going to discuss Venom. Yeah. It's going to oh. <laughs> I mean, I was going to start off with saying, you know, I was very vocal on Twitter about my thoughts. You said like one word and you said nothing. Yeah. So I wanted to hear what you thought first. I, I actually, I was reeling with this for a while because okay. I sat looking at my phone like, what can I say about this movie? And I thought about our Twitter policy and was like, oh, there's nothing I can say that's going to be diplomatic, that is not going to uh, disparage this movie. Mm -hmm. So that's that kind of sums up how I felt about the movie. Yikes. OK, Umberto? Uh, I was a little diplomatic, but let's keep it real. Uh, as I said on Twitter, the movie did not achieve symbiosis for me. Okay. <laughs> Which was really Ooh. clever. I liked that, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but. It's the, it's the kind of bad superhero movie that sets the genre back like 10, 15 years. Um, I'm not a fan of what they call the Sony universe of Marvel characters or what they're trying to do basically with Spider-Man intellectual property or otherwise known as Spider-Man villains. You can't create a universe of characters that are successful being known as villains for Spider-Man to fight against. There should have at least maybe have been or an attempt to have a Tom Holland a Tom Holland appearance or something, but the movie's disjointed. Uh, you see a lot of these actors phoning the performances. You don't, there's no rooting interest for Eddie Brock. We don't get to spend time with him. I mean, it was, okay, let's just get to Venom quickly. Don't get me wrong. Like, there was one cool scene with Venom with the SWAT team. Sure. That was really cool. Like, when that Venom... That was shot right outside my apartment. Oh, look at that. Just come back. Yeah. I'll have to make sure the TMZ tour bus knows that. Anyways. Um, yeah, it just it just didn't do it for me, man. And I think that I think it's it's tough because like I, I want to like it, man. Yeah, I want to like also. Of course you did. It's not like I didn't even enjoy it. Like there are bad Marvel superhero movies, but that you I don't still, know what you you're still but you about. still <laughs> but you still enjoy them. Right. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Dark World wasn't fantastic, but you enjoy but it, it. Yeah. You know. Well, what's interesting about this movie is that there's so many different like opinions about it like like I said I it wasn't as bad as I had heard it was going to be I mean everyone's been talking about this for how many months now since comic-con yeah previously. and like I heard so many things about it and so I kind of I lowered my expectations and um, you know I, I laughed a lot I don't know whether that was intentional from the studio or not which yeah, is a say, problem they probably didn't they don't they didn't prepare us properly for what exactly we saw. but you, I did like Tom Hardy I mean I, I'm a huge fan of his oh, and he, he was making a choice like that's the only way to describe his performance I mean not to say that it was good or bad it's just like that accent the you know his uh, body language and all of that it was a big big choice and I guess you either like latch on to that or you don't and it didn't quite connect for me but are you guys saying you weren't entertained even like you ha didn't you weren't like whoa that was cool or one, you had, cool, yeah. one cool scene like I said in the SWAT team doesn't make up for a bad movie they, the studio yeah. Marvel has changed the game so much that basically we get to see the movie as press two three weeks out Okay, that, and even DC does this now. Two, three weeks out, because that's how confident they are in their movies. So if you're going to put out a movie for us to see, and you have an, you literally showing it to us a day or two before it comes out, and we could talk about it. That's never a good sign. Yeah. So if you want to get in the game and you can't show us your movie two, three weeks out, then you're already in a, at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So the expectation is set with us at least mm -hmm. that, okay, maybe this is not gonna be good since the studio doesn't have that much confidence in it to show it to us 48 hours before release. It just all s spells out to me that no one knew, no one knows or knew what to expect. Studio didn't know really what they had on their hands and so they're trying to, you know, maybe uh, curb it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, the movie itself didn't really know what it wanted to be. I mean, they cut forty uh, minutes out of it. Exactly, that's so what I was like going to say. So it's like you could see the you could see the editors, what I call I call the producers' hands all over. Again. Yeah, you know, it just it just felt very disjointed. Mm -hmm. It was a missed opportunity because I felt it could have been a really cool buddy movie with Venom being the mm -hmm. devil. Some shoulder. of that was some of the was some of the best stuff in yeah. the movie. Um, right, but I mean to that point, like even the. I don't know how you guys felt, but even like the Venom voice, like the first thing. I actually like, loved it me. because like, it was really that funny. Actually but, but like the first time it happened, I was like, wait, is that so, how am I supposed to feel about this? Like, I thought is it was hilarious. 
I, I don't know saying. if all of it was supposed to be funny. Well, I think that they, as the movie there. went along, like I think they embraced the fact that he was like this voice inside his head making fun of him. Sure. Um, but I don't even mean just like the lines that he says. I just mean like the voice, just like the voice, all, just the voice, the just all of it was just like it really took me. Well, out. I think we all agree that if people go into it knowing that it's gonna be silly, you might actually come out of it enjoying it. I think we all went into it thinking it's a very serious, dark, yeah, superhero which or not. anti-hero. Kids will love it. I agree. Right. I think twelve-year-olds are going to eat it up. Yeah, I mean it's the like family it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tracking well within that demo, so it's obviously going to. What's the rating? Uh, thirteen, right? PG thirteen, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it was like a, I mean, a, you know, cartoon that I would watch on a Saturday morning, mm -hmm. like all those you know superhero cartoons. So. Yep. I yeah. mean, it's it'll do fine, but I'm. And I'm a, you guys know I'm a diehard yeah, fanboy. Die. I can't believe I'm actually going to recommend A Star Is Born, which I've now seen twice <gasps> oh my before God. seeing Venom. That's how good this. That's how good A Star Is Born. Is. So that's how bad Venom good. is. That's a that's a completely different video okay. talking about how great A Star Is Born yeah. is. It's but, um, so good. I mean, Venom is going to make double at least what. But Star where do Born. but where do where do they go from here with this? I mean, you talk. All right. So basically, the Sony universe of Marvel characters has a lot of challenges inside. For example, Night Watch, okay? I, I, was around, I was in my 20s when Night Watch came out as a comic, and it didn't even work as a comic book. It only lasted a few issues. So to, make, to take this intellectual property or IP and try to make a movie out of a comic book that didn't work with its target audience is, is quite a difficult road ahead for them on that front. They have Mobius, Morbius mm -hmm. as well. With, I mean, they got Jared Leto. It's mm -hmm. gonna basically be a vampire movie. Maybe that would work. That's a Sinister Six. The Sinister in, Six. Is, is not gonna happen. That's been dead for years. Deader than this movie, quite frankly. <laughs> and uh, I, I, just, I think they ha they're gonna have challenges ahead of them because again, how are you gonna create cohesive. of, how are you gonna bastardize the IP, try to create this bootleg universe to coexist when you have Marvel working with you, right. elevating your Spider-Man IP, yet you guys set it back multiple years. I think this is a regime, and not surprise, that clearly doesn't know what they're doing with Super IP, as this president has this kind of experience at his previous studio. I thought it was also interesting before the movie started in the credits, you know, the uh, in association with Marvel. Yeah, Marvel didn't want nothing to do with you. You could be associated with us, but... Yeah, yeah, it's to really like sort of put the distance like it's not really a Marvel product. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, I thought that was kind of hilarious. Well, Bob Iger, if you're watching this, do us a solid. Spend the billion and buy back the IP from Sony. <laughs> they need help desperately. Just oh buy, 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 buy back Spider-Man and the rest of the IP. Someone's really bitter. Not, not bitter. I, I speak as... I, He's I got his heart in this. He's yes, I speak as a fanboy and I represent fanboys and they're not feeling it. Okay, it's, so we all have... <laughs> somewhat differing opinions, but we it's all okay. didn't like it. I didn't like it. Um, you? After this video, I'm not going to think about this movie again. And you? I mean, I, it's what I tweeted, you know? Like, I liked it more than I thought I would, but I didn't like it. Go see Venom or don't. Go see Star Is Born instead. Yes. For sure. Mm -hmm.